Well, I mean, the background was uh, I've been in business for 20 years now. So I started my business journey in the States. Then I moved back uh, first to Burundi. I had a business there. Then I moved to Rwanda uh, to do ARED. Um, but the journey is the same, right? Um, the book was mostly to document my journey, especially for, for the new, for the next generation entrepreneur. A lot of time what I see now is entrepreneur, I have a misconception of what entrepreneurship is. And um, especially now we have glamorized what entrepreneurship is. I wanted to document and show that this is not a glamour journey. Right. Uh, it's really hard. And that's what the, the, the book was started to be. Right. We see um, even on your socials that you make these short clips kind of giving tips to new entrepreneurs um, and you cover different things from investing in stocks to uh, you know how to identify good investors for your company and different little tips and tricks like that. Uh, do you do that because you wish you had some guidance like that or because you think that uh, people need that right now? You're trying to grow the entrepreneurship. Why did you decide to, to go into that? You know what shocked me when I came to uh, Rwanda and it's not a Rwandan uh, issue, it's really a regional issue, is there was no you know, mentorship. Like in the States, for example, you can Google on YouTube and find videos on any topic you pretty much want. Mm -hmm. But in, in Africa, we don't have that. If you, if you do a search on YouTube about how to start a business, how to invest and all, you don't find any, anything. And the, the worst case is, the, the worst thing is, people tend to, to, to keep the information for themselves. So I wanted to change that narrative. And I believe that if, if we want to be successful as a continent, we have to share the information, especially to the next generation. And that's really what uh, the, these vlogs and this, these clips and videos are all about. It's really to share my experience and what I've learned from the mistakes I made so they don't have to make the same mistakes. Right, so is that a little bit of what the book is covering? Because the book is called My African Dream. Um, it's talking about your, your own journey. You're covering your entrepreneurship journey or everything? Pretty much everything. It's a biography, right? Uh, it, it's, so when I came back uh, to Rwanda, or on the continent, I like to say on the continent, uh, I started mentoring uh, young entrepreneurs. And what struck me the most was they were shocked that I moved back from the States back to the continent. Uh, and the funny thing is they, they, they think if you came back, two things happened. You either got deported or you just ran away from, from, from something. That's Terrible. the mindset, you right. know? So that's why I called it My African Dream. It, the initial title was not My African Dream, but I wanted to show that there is opportunity here. Uh, on the continent as much as anywhere else. And that's what this journey, about, uh, it's all about because my mindset back then was the same. Right. I left in 96 right. when there was war all over the region. Um, I grew up in Burundi uh, and the war started in 94 also. So I left, you know, believing never to come back. That was my mindset then. And I, I left thinking, the States was the dream. Everybody was successful there. You know, I'd never been there before. So I had this misconception of what the West was. And that's what the book documents, right? And, and all the trials and tribulation I went through when I went there. Because, I, you know, it, it was a lot of stuff that I went through. Uh, and I wanted to share something really transparent. Because I, I didn't want to show this, this story of you go, you become this person, and now you're big. No, I really went through all the trials, all the problems all the culture shock, you know, and, and it, it's really an inspirational part of the book uh, also. Right. You mentioned about, you know, people being surprised that you would have wanted to come back to the continent, but um, a lot of things that I, I hear often, especially when I ask people, you know, what would they like to see um, out of a business program or what would they like to learn? A lot of times it's people in the diaspora um, from Africa, around the world, who want to know how they can come back um, in a sustainable way. Apparently, you know, there, because there's a lot of uncertainty um, as to doing business here, uh, what would you, what tips, I guess, or what would you say to anyone who's right now in the diaspora wanting to do business back on the continent um, but isn't sure exactly how to do it? Well, I mean, the, the, the top uh, growth in economy are in Africa. Uh, look at the statistic, you know. Uh, what pushed me to come back was I used to come on vacation. And every time I used to come, something changed. The landscape changed. You hear more investment coming in. You hear more opportunities. You, need, you hear the laws changing to, right. to facilitate those things. But of course, anything you do is a risk. 
Um, and, and you have to give yourself a learning curve. When you spend so much time abroad, you know, you grow roots, right? And, and you're so used to that system wherever you are, it's very difficult to make that decision to move back, even though it's your country. Uh, but I've always been a, a risk taker. You yeah. know? So that, that's been, my, it's in my DNA. So uh, when I made my decision to come back is during the crashes that happened in 08 in the States, the, the financial mm. crisis. That's when I knew it was time for me to leave. Um, and a few things happened. My house there, I lost value 50%. And I'm coming here, I see people starting businesses, everything is growing, and also it, it was a no-brainer for me. But it took me at least a year to adapt to, to the system, right? right. Um, and you have to come with, with some savings. Uh, please, come with some savings, that's, that's the key also. Right. <laughs> um, another, I, I do want to ask you uh, about the book again, but another thing I wanted to ask you, you know, how did you manage to sort of uh, navigate because of course coming from working in the States for many years and then coming back to working here in Randa or anywhere on the continent clearly things are a bit different the, the way that things work are different processes are different um, and I think that sometimes that can be a roadblock for some people um, how did you navigate the differences in in working with other people but also in um, in the way that things work here I mean, the challenge is always there. You know, it's also a cultural issue, right? I came with this, you know, mindset of the West where you, you're aggressive. It doesn't work well in Rwanda. Right. Uh, I remember clearly a, a very short story. I was waiting for my license a few years back from the city of Kigali. I kept going there every day. Finally, the person told me, Henry, you want stuff fast. This is Rwanda, you need to slow down. Yeah. So, but you don't, you just keep pushing. I mean, I don't think you ever adapt. It's based on your personality. I'm not sure I've adapted, but uh, I keep pushing. But the good thing is, Africa is 50 plus countries, right? We, we operate now in Uganda, we're, we're about to be in Nigeria and Ivory Coast this year. So you have to have this expansion mindset also. Uh, so it doesn't, so you're not cluttered or, or, or limited to one right. geographic or one country. And right. that's really also will help you uh, get over that, that those, those are the challenges you have. Right, so we know that you do um, a red group and you have your solar solutions. Is this going to be another revenue stream for you? Is that what you're uh, sort of doing with this or is it just to share your story? Um, a revenue stream, I'm not sure, but definitely uh, I'm doing more speaking engagement because of the book now. Uh, I'm, I'm preparing maybe my transition uh, to my, 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 my new passion now is mentoring. I love mentoring, I love sharing information, I love talking to the youth and, and, and helping them, you know, follow their dreams and grow their dreams. So that's really part of my, you know, new passion that I have. Uh, but Revenue Stream, it's too early, but there will be a sequel for sure. Oh, so this isn't your, your oh, only... Oh, no, 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 no. So no. you're going to be... so. As I said before, you're a businessman, of course, uh, innovator. You've become something of a motivational speaker, and now you're really moving into the world of writing. Yeah, I mean, uh, again, that story stopped when I come back in Rwanda. Ah. So now there has to be uh, the the continuation hey, of exactly, the biography. Right? So, uh, and that'll be the, the maybe in next two years I'll, I'll, I'll launch it, but. Um, I, I like to multitask, right? I don't like to limit myself. Right. I'm at that age now. I want a, anything that comes out of my mind. I want to do it. So um, I'm not a writer per se, but I wanted to write my story. I wanted to share my story, especially for my kids. Right. You know, so they can see what dad was. Absolutely. Uh, you know, so it's a, lo a lot of different issues. So finally, I, I wanted to, uh, before I let you go, you know, we're seeing now more countries investing um, into solar solutions now, you know. Uh, we're starting to take that a bit more seriously, especially on the continent. Do you have plans to sort of meet more of these uh, demands that are happening with ARED? Uh, good question. So we, we actually have transitioned from uh, just a solar product now to a technology company using solar technology. So. A lot of time we limit what solar is as just an energy provider, but solar has so many applications. And the, the application we're focusing on is powering um, connectivity and digital services. That's really what the space we in. So we're more of an ICT than a renewable energy company, but we use solar technology to power 
the, 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 the technology basically. So we don't sell energy, we, we sell digital services and connectivity, but because of the energy problem in rural areas, semi-urban area, you need some type of energy source, and solar is perfect for us. What we, what the narrative we're trying to change is solar is strictly for energy consumption. Right. No, we're trying to show that solar can be used for so many uh, different things. You can use solar for water purification system. Right, um, right, right. You can use solar for now, you know, why powering Wi-Fi system. 360 solution. A exactly, and that's what we are. We're more of a technology for social good, and solar is just part of the equation. Awesome. Thank you so much, Henry.